Okay, this is going to be number five from the 2019 Calc BC exam, um, and it's kind of just like a let's do calculus type of problem. They actually are kind of fond of this recently, so they'll give you a function and then tell you certain parameters to plug in and ask you questions about it. So here's what we have. We have f of x is 1 over uh, x squared minus 2x plus k. And in part A, we are told that we need to find k when f prime of 0 is equal to 6. Uh, we're actually told to find the slope, find k such that the slope of the line tangent to the graph at 0 is 6. But that just means f prime of 0 is 6. So um, first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this in a form I would rather take the derivative of. So I'm going to bring it up to the numerator with a negative 1 exponent. And now I'm going to chain rule this thing. So f prime of x is, so bring the exponent down and then subtract one from the exponent and then multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So times two x minus two. And uh, now I'm gonna use the fact that f prime of zero equals six. So that means that uh, plugging in zero, I actually just get negative, everything with an x cancels. So we just get negative k to the negative second times negative two, and that has to equal six which means that k to the negative second has to equal three. We're also told that k has to be greater than zero, um, so we don't have to worry about a plus or minus situation here. And uh, so k is three to the negative one half, or you might prefer to write that as k is one over the square root of three. All right, so that's part A. Uh, part B is kind of similar. Uh, it's the same function, except now we're gonna let k equal negative eight and we have to find the integral from zero to one of f of x dx. So let's first write out what this integral looks like when we substitute for k. So we get that, um, and that looks to me like something that either um, is gonna end up an arctan or a partial fraction type thing. So I'm gonna try to factor the denominator. And in this case, it does factor. And so that means I'm gonna do partial fractions on this. So to do partial fractions, uh, I'm gonna start with a over x minus four plus b over x plus two is equal to one over, make sure you use the factored form here. And I like to use the cover up method for this. So, um, and there's a separate video on that for sure. So I'm gonna first let x equal four, and that's gonna allow me to solve for a. And so a will be just replace uh, x with four, so you cover up the x minus four and you plug in four for x and you get one over six. Uh, what you're really doing is just multiplying the whole thing by the quantity x minus four and canceling where you can then substitute four. Uh, it's a well-known method uh, and I use it pretty much all the time, especially it always works on AP level questions. So I'm gonna let x equal negative two. So what I'm really doing up there is I'm multiplying the whole equation by the quantity x plus two canceling where I can, and then substituting negative two to kind of zero some things out. So this will give me that b is equal to negative uh, one sixth. So my actual integral that I'm doing is the integral from zero to one of one sixth over x minus four minus one sixth over x plus two dx. Uh, all right, so let's integrate this. I'm gonna take one sixth out of everything. And then uh, the integral of one over x minus four is the natural log of the absolute value of x minus four. That's gonna matter a lot in this problem, so make sure you're putting those absolute values in. And then minus the integral of um, one over x plus two is gonna give me the natural log of the absolute value of x plus two. And we're gonna use the fundamental theorem, so we're going from zero to one. So now it's just straight substitution. So first substituting one. So it's one sixth, the natural log of Remember the absolute value there is really important. So it's a natural log of the absolute value of negative three, which is just the natural log of three. And then minus the natural log of the absolute value of three, but that's just the natural log of three. Um, all right, so that was substituting one, and now we're gonna substitute zero. So that's minus one six, substituting zero. Again, those absolute values are crucial on this problem. So we get natural log of the absolute value of negative four, which is uh, the natural log of four and then uh, minus the natural log of two. Okay, if you look at this, this actually simplifies a lot better than you might have guessed to begin with because natural log of three minus natural log of three is just zero. So that whole first part is zero. And then I'm gonna write it 
as uh, negative 1 6 the natural log of 2 and the reason that I'm doing that is because the natural log of 4 minus the natural log of 2 by properties of logs is the natural log of 4 over 2 which is the natural log of 2. All right let's move on to part C. Okay so part C we are told that k is equal to 1 this time and we want to find the value of the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x dx or show that it diverges. So that's gonna actually be important. It's kind of like foreshadowing. Um, so I'm first gonna, again, rewrite this so it looks correctly. Looks correct, looks right, looks the way it should. Um, and here we can definitely factor that denominator. So this, is, this seems like it's working its way toward an improper integral. Um, and the reason is because between zero and two, um, x equals 1 is going to cause a problem because that's a vertical asymptote for our integrand. So the function itself kind of looks like this, and that's at x equals 1. So what we need to do here is we need to evaluate this integral kind of carefully. So I'm going to let b approach 1 from the left, and then the integral from 0 to b. You have to break it up because of that vertical asymptote. And then I'm going to add to that the limit as a approaches 1 from the right of the integral from a to 2 of, oh, I actually wrote the wrong integrand there. Sorry, it should be the quantity x minus 1 squared again. Um, and then I wonder if I can go back and delete. Let's see. Um, there. OK, and then this is only going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 2 if both of these integrals converge. So we need both of them to convert. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try the first one. So I'm gonna just look at, look at this integral, see if that converges. If it converges, I'll go on and I'll do the second integral. If it doesn't converge, I'm just gonna stop there and say that this whole thing diverges. So we are doing this integral. So I'm gonna rewrite it in a way that I would prefer to integrate. So x minus one to the negative second. And now we're gonna integrate that. So don't forget these limits all the way through. So to integrate that, it's plus one gives you negative one times the reciprocal. So negative one times the quantity x minus one to the negative first. And then we're going from zero to b. Okay, so fundamental theorem. Still need this limit because I'm still gonna have b's in this. So first I plug in b and then minus plug in um, zero gives you the, the negative of negative one, which is one. Um, but if you look at that, the limit as b approaches 1 from the left of negative 1 over b minus 1 doesn't exist. And so this integral actually diverges. And since this diverges, we can say that overall the entire thing diverges. And we're never even going to calculate the other part. So we have shown that this diverges because one part of it diverges. So uh, you have to kind of remember that fact. There's no such thing as like symmetric divergence. Um, but also, I mean, uh, in this case, it's a little easier. It's a little more confusing when one goes to infinity and one goes to negative infinity. But if you look at the graph, it's like pretty clear that if one of those is going to positive infinity, the other one will also go to positive infinity. Um, and then you're going to add those and it definitely diverges. But the key thing is when you have a vertical asymptote in, in the middle of your interval, both of the integrals you write need to converge for the thing overall to converge, and that didn't happen here. So this diverges. Um, that's it for the question. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.